I'm here with Jeff Crosby, Associate Publisher and Vice President of Sales and Marketing at InterVarsity Press. Thank you, Jeff, for joining us today. I'm very happy to join you, Brian. As you know, Frederick Beekner will soon be turning 90 years old. Is there anything you would like to wish him for this great milestone? I think, Fred, I would love to, to wish you many more years of, of great reading of books and, uh, and warm and rich time with family and friends, whether in Florida or in New England, wherever you are. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, Jeff. I'm sure Mr. Beekner will greatly appreciate hearing from you. Next, can you tell me how you first learned about his work? Yeah, it was in 1983. It was the year that I graduated uh, from college. And uh, went straight from that to the to the lucrative business of running a, an independent bookstore in Bloomington, Indiana. And as part of my training uh, for that uh, running that bookstore, I went down to Dallas, Texas, and uh, spent some time with a bookseller named Chuck Schechner. And uh, Chuck walked me over to the to the shelf, and he said, "Jeff, this this is a book you need to read." And it was wishful thinking. I had been published ten years before. Uh, but Chuck said, if you've not read Beekner, you need to read Beekner. I bought the I bought the book. I took it on the flight home with me from Dallas back to, to Indianapolis Airport. I read it on the on the flight and I was just blown away by these short, pithy uh, alphabetical essays on things like vocation and incarnation and grace and guilt. And I was hooked. Uh, I subsequently uh, got on the Ingram Book Company uh, microfiche in those days, not the website, and ordered everything Fred had written back, backward and forward from that moment in 1973. And uh, my reading list for the next year or so was set with, with what I had right there. So I, uh, I owe a debt of gratitude to a bookseller who put a book by someone I had never heard of in my hands, and um, the rest, as they say, is history. That's really a great story. Thank you, Jeff. What would you say most attracts you to Mr. Beekner's writing? I think it's um, the utter honesty of his books, uh, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. I think his books are real. Um, they're not make-believe. Even the novels are. They're so uh, steeped in an authentic vision for humanity, uh, for God, for faith, for the absence of God, the absence of faith. Uh, failure and and more. It's just that that richness, authenticity, um, that uh, a lot of books that I encounter. I think, sort of, you know, what planet are you living on to be able to express uh, things in this way? But with Fred, uh, I just I think it's that that honesty, that authenticity, and I think that's it's no less true for something like Sacred Journey uh, than for for Wizard's Tide um, or the Bev novels. Um, regardless of which of his forms you're talking about, I think it's it's that uh, that honesty. But the other thing is the artfulness of the craft of writing that uh, you can tell the Fred of someone you know all the way back uh, to that earliest novel that he won all the the, the accolades for, uh, straight up until the the more recent things he's done, that he cares about the craft of writing and. Um, and so I think that has also been a draw for me. How would you say that Mr. Beekner's writing has influenced your career? I think part of it is what I, what I just talked about, is that uh, I, I work in publishing. And though I write a bit myself, uh, mostly for trade journals and magazines and some websites, um, uh, most of my work is actually caring for the words, the work of other people. And, um, and so that uh, attention to the craft of writing, I think, is how it's influenced my career. As I look at, at books that we might publish here at University Press, uh, I am drawn to books. I just had one last week by a writer from the University of, of Virginia named Karen Marsh. I'm drawn to, to books where you can tell that the author is not merely uh, writing what he or she believes an audience wants to read, but rather is dedicated to that, to the craft of writing, to how words are expressed artfully and carefully uh, and truthfully. And so I think that Fred's writing, um, as much as anyone, has caused me to pay attention to writers, even if they're new voices, voices that are unpublished, people 
uh, yet who it's so clear that they care about words artfully expressed. And so uh, I, I'd say that's the biggest uh, impact, but reading someone like him and rereading, which I do regularly, uh, particularly Sacred Journey, um, and now and then I would say are the two that I reread the most, maybe Wizard's Tide as well. Um, when I read books like that, it makes me want to write. It makes me want to I try to express my own experience and my own journey, my own vision uh, for uh, for life, for humanity, for uh, uh, faith in God, and and so forth. So I think those two things, caring for the work of others, as well as instilling in me this impulse of using my own words um, in whatever form, uh, I, whether it's business writing or creative writing. That's great, John. Thank you. Um, you mentioned wishful thinking in some of uh, Mr. Beekner's other books, and I see that you have wishful thinking on your bookshelf there, yeah, which is great to see. Um, which of those books, of his books, would you say has meant the most to you? Um, that's, like asking, that's like asking me, do I love Jennifer, my, my daughter, or Dustin, my son, more? Um, so I'm going to cheat and say two. And really, they're books that tell the same story, and that's Sacred Journey and Wizard's Tide. Um, I, uh, they were some of the earliest things that I read, particularly Sacred Journey, Wizard's Tide, maybe came a few years later. Um, but the way in which Fred, uh, either in, in novel form or in nonfiction, uh, writes about his own journey and particularly his father's suicide, um, uh, which is something that's impacted my family a couple of times uh, over the last 30 years. and. Um, those are the ones that I come back to again and again and again. I think um, in reading about his journey, uh, whether in, in, the, in the novel or, or Sacred Journey, uh, somehow he illuminates something uh, in my own that I need to come back to regularly. Um, and so those are the, the top two. If I went to a third, it'd be now and then. And that is, that is what he does for me in terms of wrestling with vocation. Um, I think what what he offered us there in his journey um, to become a pastor is like uh, that wasn't a straight and narrow uh, path for him. It was a long and winding road, and so um, so those are three that come to my mind. But like I said, that's like asking us to to choose which of our kids we love the most. You're not the only one that has had that reaction, so uh, thank you. <laughs> has Mr. Beaker inspired any of your own writing? Yeah, it kind of alluded to that a, a moment ago. It's, um, it's, uh, I think that that careful expression of words. He's, um, he's caused me to um, to continue to use the language, even though I don't, I don't do it for a living. I care for other people's writing for a living, um, but there is something about a writer like him or Anne Lamott or, or Phil Yancey or or uh, Kyle Potok that. Just you read their books and and they make you want to wrestle with the language uh, yourself and so so that is one piece of it but I would say beyond that it is in publishing it's uh, it's it's caring so much about uh, about the written word whether it's in digital form or print doesn't matter to me but um, uh, books and other other writing that that brings hope. Uh, that brings a, a sense of aha, someone else understands. Uh, those are the kinds of things I love giving life to. And so I'm inspired by writers like Fred. There are others, but he's certainly at the, at the top of my list, um, applying what I see in him as I look for what we're going to publish. That's very great. So um, more broadly speaking, what influence would you say that Mr. Beekner has had on Christianity and the world at large? Yeah. Well, I, I can, uh, as anyone could do, I can only speak for the, the small corner of the world I've inhabited over the last 33 years. Um, but I think his impact on the world has been as a person of, of letters, uh, calling other writers and theologians and pastors uh, to, to do their work with ever-increasing excellence um, and understanding uh, of the men and women uh, who will encounter those words uh, being honest with them, um, and uh, being a companion on our journey. Uh, I, we, we need writers who do that for us. 
uh, who come alongside us and illuminate our own uh, journey as they so artfully, um, whether it's uh, the sermon works that he does, the novels, uh, or the nonfiction, just sort of illumine the journey, be a companion uh, to us. So I travel all around the world, and it's not uncommon, uh, particularly if I have a copy of one of Fred's books in my book. I often carry a, a listening to your life with me to read meditatively each day, and someone will ask, you know, who is that? And, uh, and we quickly on that airplane have a, a great conversation about where they should start. And I, I wonder how many of those people have, you know, gone off to, to their uh, booksellers or, or to their version of Amazon, Australia, New Zealand, or South Africa, and, and pick him up. So I think it's that companionship on the journey. He has a unique uh, way of doing that, uh, that uh, I just think few other uh, writers, at least of my time, have done. And I'm sure as we go back in the centuries, we could find others. But. So I realize this next question is difficult, but if you were to sum up Fred in a few words, what would you say? Yeah. I think of five. Wise. Uh, Fred Buechner is an incredibly wise person. Uh, artful. We've talked about that. The way in which he uh, expresses his, uh, his words uh, is artful. I think he's generous. Um, long before terms like generous orthodoxy or uh, things like that were bandied about in religion circles. Fred uh, was a person of great generosity uh, to people, whether it was uh, teaching at Yale Divinity School or just down the road from me at the Wheaton College uh, in Illinois as he talked about his students there. So wise, artful, generous, real, uh, I've talked about that, so honest. Uh, not sugarcoating anything, whether it's uh, the struggles that his daughter had that he writes about in Telling Secrets or, um, or Wrestling with Doubt and other things. He's, he is a person uh, of, of real, uh, authentic uh, expressions. And last, and this comes about perhaps from the one encounter I had with him at, at Calvin College uh, in person, uh, is kind. I, I watched how he interacted with people who were kind of lining up uh, in the in the aisleway uh, to speak with him, and the kindness with which uh, he listened to them and spoke to them uh, was um, was quite refreshing uh, for a person of his stature to to have behaved in that manner. And I just kind of I stepped back and. Uh, I watched that and I thought, I am so glad that I just saw that. Um, so wise, artful, generous, real, and kind. But I could go on if we had more time. So before we finish, is there anything else that you'd like to say? I just, uh, I hope that you know whoever is watching or listening uh, to these recordings that you're doing, mine and, and others that I know you're you're lining up. I, I hope that those who listen um, will um, will go out and pick up a, a Fred Bigner book that they've not encountered before and engage with it and, and be impacted and then tell other people about it. Um, his works uh, mean a great deal to people and they need to continue to be uh, talked about and promoted. So I appreciate all that you and the center are doing to make sure that happens, Brian. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. That finishes our interview. Thanks again. All right. Thank you.